Good morning everyone, how is it going today? Welcome to this video and welcome back to the channel. It has been a while. Now in this video we're going to be talking about Langchain, specifically the new version of Langchain, which is its first stable release. And we're going to be talking we're going to be going through the official article that they posted in January 8th, so a few days ago, about this new release. We're going to be talking about the main changes that they have made to the library and what you will have to do if you're planning on building a new application using this new release of the framework, okay? Now, this one has been an amazing year here at the company. We have been able to develop several applications using Langchain and these applications are already working, they're already in production and they are already solving real-world problems and helping real people with their lives. So I'm very happy to see that Langchain is already getting to its first stable release. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, uh, let's go right to, to the video. And don't forget that if you like content about artificial intelligence and uh, software development, more specifically tutorials on how to implement them, don't forget to subscribe, okay? So, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's start with the article right here. Um, this is the article that was published when the official release was announced. It was in January 8th, so it's just a few days ago. And we're going to go through all of um, what the article discusses and to explain the new features and changes right here, okay? Now, Langchain, as you may know, is a library that is released both in Python and JavaScript. Um, that makes it available for your backend applications. Here you have the links to the guides to the documentation, and you also have here the link to the Python GitHub discussion, and the link to the YouTube walkthrough made by Harrison himself, who is the CEO and the creator of Langchain. Okay, I will leave, of course, the link to this article in this in the description so that you can check it out. Um, about the introduction, we're, we're presented with a structural change, which is the main and uh, the most important change uh, that, the, that Langchain is going through. Um, the first one is that instead of considering it a library, now we should start considering Langchain as a framework, a framework for developing uh, language model applications. Okay, um, what does this mean? This means that the library part in, its, in itself is being split into different packages, okay? And that's exemplified right here. Uh, before, if you wanted to use Langchain, what you would do is you would install the Langchain package. If you were using, for example, Python, you would do pip install Langchain, and then you would have everything inside of that package. From there, you, would, you were able to install all of the integrations with the third-party providers, like, for example, the vector stores you would do from langchain dot vector stores import chroma or quadrant for example okay now what happens is that they have split langchain itself into three different packages they have what is langchain right here they have what is langchain community right here and then they have langchain core okay it's easier to see in this way here right here so what is langchain core Langchain Core is going to be basically where you will find all of the basic abstractions of Langchain. Okay, here you will find, for example, the prompt classes, the AI message classes, the LLM classes, all of these abstractions that allow you to um, use sort of building blocks to create your applications. Okay, that's Langchain Core. Okay, now secondly, we have Langchain Community which is going to be the, the, the third-party integrations of Langchain, okay? Here in the article, they say that they have almost 700 integrations ranging from language models to vector stores to tools uh, for the agents uh, of Langchain to use. Um, in, and all of these integrations, or almost all of them, are going to be included in the Langchain community package. So if you do pip install Langchain core, you will not have the packages that pertain to the uh, third-party integrations. Okay, so for example, now if you want to use Chroma as a vector store, you will not be able to import it from Langchain itself, but you will have to do 
you will have to do pip install Langchain community and then from Langchain community dot vector stores import chroma for example i mean i don't know exactly the path from the top of my head but that's ex that's kind of how it's going to look like all right um, so that's the, the Langchain community right now. You have also the model providers, the retrievals, and the tools, like for example, the ones that allow you to, to surf the web, uh, etc. Okay, so that's the second part right here. Um, however, something to keep in mind is that not all of the third party integrations are going to be inside of the Langchain community package. Um, so far, as they say, they have 10 packages that are outside from the Langchain community package and they have their own package. Among these, we can find OpenAI, Google and Mistral, for example. Okay, That means that they have their own package that you will have to install if you are going to, if you're going to use them. So, for example, if you want to use a language model by OpenAI, you will have to pip install uh, Langchain OpenAI uh, and then that's the one that is going to include uh, the language models and the embeddings from OpenAI. Okay, so that's for third-party integrations. And thirdly, we have the Langchain, the irregular Langchain package. That one right there, they have left it in the version 0.0.x um, because, of course, they don't want to break any already functioning applications. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, the main features of this release are going to be located in Langchain Community and Langchain Core, and that's um, from where you should start importing your your components in order to use the latest version. Okay. All right, and we arrive to the part of observability. Um, as you may know, language model applications are very non-deterministic. and I mean, there is a non-deterministic component to them in a sense that we are never absolutely sure of what a language model is going to respond to our input. That is why observability is a main part of um, building language model applications and that is actually exemplified right here. Here, the observability is going to surround all of the framework. Um, in order to solve this problem of non-deterministic non components, uh, Langchain, they have built a tool called Langsmith, which is basically a tool that is going to allow you to log every single input and output for every element inside of your chain so that you have the best, I mean, a better debugging experience of your application. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. They Currently, they have it in a private beta version. But if you want to check it out, you just have to go and click right here in the Langsmith part and you can just sign up to their waitlist. Um, so yeah, that's basically what they're building and it's more of a platform that, than a library or anything else. It's going to be um, a place where you're going to be able to debug your language model application. So um, as far as I know, this is the first uh, product that does this in the market, but I mean, there might be others. Now, we also have right here an accent or a mention of composability. Um, now, what is composability? It basically means that you're supposed to be able to chain different methods and components together, which I suppose that is very useful to you if you're using Langchain, because as the name suggests, it is a library or a framework that allows you to chain different, different logic parts, lo logic components together to create an application or a chain, okay? Um, so we were already building chains and this time, or I mean a few months ago already, I think they, d they released what they call Langchain Expression Language, which is right here and they call it LCEL. This language expression, this Langchain expression language basically is just a way to write and to declare your your chains in a more pipeline like um, syntax. OK, I think that we can see it right here. An example um, how to create a um, chain. So, yeah, for example, you would just create your different components of your chain and then you put them all together in a chain like this. And this is supposed to to work for all of the chains available in Langchain. This is, of course, going to this all, of course, makes it possible for you to modify already existing chains. 
and then also some changes in the naming conventions but all right we we will see that when we when we're actually using the library all right something something else that they mentioned right here is their emphasis on the streaming endpoints okay that they are going to be exposing in the language in the langchain um, in the langchain expression language okay um, now what is streaming in in language model applications as you may have noticed in chat gpt you are not getting the entire response and the entire generated response in one batch okay so let's say that in chat gpt you ask a question and the answer is this big you're not going to get all of this in one batch if you have noticed when you ask a question it starts um, showing the answer as it is being generated it's it's like it's the as if the language model is what was writing in front of you okay now this is important not not only um, to make it look good but for the user experience in general otherwise the users would have to wait like several seconds before they get an answer so showing them in real time that the air, their answer is being generated is very important for the for the experience in our language model applications so that's why Langchain they are putting out this um, they're exposing two different methods stream and a stream inside of any chain constructed with language uh, with Langchain expression language so now it's going to be even easier for us to stream our answers into into our applications and make it easier for our users okay uh, we're getting to uh, the section talking about output parsing which is basically the these are basically functions that allow you to be sure that a certain step in your chain is always going to return the same format as an answer okay so for example if for one step in your chain you need to get an answer in a string format there is an output parser that is i think it's called string output parser that is going to make sure that every time that you get a response from a given um from a given language model or whichever step you're in your chain uh, you're going to get a string in return so this is basically uh, something that they they have I mean they, they already had in Langchain but this time they are mentioning that for for this output parsers we're going to also be able to stream this output the the content that is being parsed through the output as it is being generated so that is that's also very very useful it's going to make it faster for our chains to work and easier for uh, developer experience in general okay all right now we arrive to the section called retrieval um, if you had seen some of the videos in the in this channel you know that one of the main aspects of Langchain is being able to talk to your personal data okay um, being able to ask a language model about data that it was not trained on data that you may have in your in your email account in your notes in your personal private database or in your com company's database and that is one of the main uses of Langchain um, they just reinstantiate that and they also included they, they mentioned here that they are inc including new advanced retrieval strategies from academia you may want to take a look at them if you're interested in the more um, technical side of this but something very interesting right here is that they are exposing an indexing API that you can see right here so the indexing API uh, we're going to make a video about it and show you how it works and everything but just so that you know what's new about it is that it's uh, it is here to make you to make it easier to index your data basically so this includes avoid writing duplicated content into your vector store i know that's usually um, a delicate part of the application development process in which we have to make sure that every vector has its uh, its very precise metadata to be sure that we're not duplicating content so this right this one right here uh, i mean this api is here to help us do that also it is supposed to avoid 
rewriting unchanged content and avoid recomputing embeddings over unchanged content. So basically a more advanced indexing for our retrieved, I mean for, for our data that we're going to use for retrieval. Um, and yeah, they just mentioned some other other libraries that use Langshing for a more opinionated approach and retrieval. And here we have a section mentioning the agents. Now the agents are probably the main or the most popular part of Langchain, which <clears throat> and probably the reason why they become so popular, why Langchain became so popular in the first place. Um, now what are agents? In case you're not familiar with it, it is a component in your language model application that is able to think by itself and implement a solution based on what it recent okay so it will take an input it is going to use the a language model to reason about what it can do to implement a solution given your question and then it's going to be able to use tools to implement that solution um, so for example a tool can be um, an external api it can be a calculator it can be for example an api that serves the web and finds and finds website relevant websites relevant to the question that the user asked. Um, so yeah, being basically it's um, a tool that's going to be able to reason and apply a tool based on what you thought about it. Um, here in the article they say that they have um, reinvested a lot of time um, covering integrations with more third-party tools in the existing agents that come with Langchain. Um, they have also in worked on ways to structure language model responses to fit the input schema of those tools and a more flexible way to specify the the ways in which the agent um, the agent tools work together and this is what we already mentioned which is the Langchain uh, expression language okay which is the one that allows you to create chains or agents in a more pipeline uh, like syntax um, they also mentioned that they have implemented new methods, agent methods from academia. One of them, for example, is React, which you may see if you go right here, they have the official, I mean, they have the paper if you want to take a look at it, um, the more technical side. But yeah, here basically they covered agents, which are one of the main parts of Langchain. And then finally, we just see um, I mentioned that they are already thinking of Langchain 0.2, which of course is going to be um, a, a minor release. Um, oh, something that I forgot to mention probably is that with this new release, they are also in changing the versioning convention in a way that every minor bump, any, any minor new version is going to be accompanied by a bump in the second digit and these ones are going to have breaking changes and any bug fixes are going to come with a bump in the third digit um, yeah so basically that's pretty much all for this article and um, I mean they also have a mention of Langgraph which is another product that they're working on but we will be able to talk about it in another video but so far this is how it looks like this is the what Langchain is uh, promising for us and yeah I mean to me it sounds pretty good let me know what you think about it and be sure to to come here for the next video because we're going to be making the quick start and showcase of almost the main changes with the code itself um, in a Jupyter notebook so that you can ha get your hands dirty with some code so yeah thank you very much for, for watching and I'll see you in the next one.